Hello everybody, uh, my name is Bo Dumitrescu and we're here today with John Grinder, co-developer of New Code NLP and also the co-editor of his brand new book, The Origins of Neuro Linguistic Programming. And today we're going to talk a little bit about his new book. So John, thank you so much for doing this interview with Pleasure. us, for Pleasure. the Dutch audience. Greetings to the Dutch NLP Society. Yeah. Uh, my intention, which I declared quite explicitly to Bo, is to make sure that you have accessible the most up-to-date understanding and patterning available in NLP. Thank you for that. Uh, so as a few first question about the new book mm. is when you go back to the, the 70s the feverish times of those you know, contexts how did you blend in your view of the world with those times? Well, there are many many ways to respond to those questions the first thing that comes off the top for me was I was a very active organizer politically against the Vietnam War which was raging at the time did not regard it as a justified war, if there really can be such a thing, and I think in some cases there can be, um, and put my talents and resources with like-minded people to attempt to take responsibility for the actions of our government and bring this to a close, removing the burden from the people who lived in Southeast Asia at the time, as well as our own men and women who served in Vietnam. To me, it wasn't justified. During this period, um, there were a number of uh, left-wing organizations, student organizations, uh, Students for Democratic Society, a number of these organizations who had uh, come together with similar objective to put a stop to what was going on in Southeast Asia. One of the things which went on, which coincided, overlapped strongly with the development of NLP, was that rarely have I spent time with such a driven group of people. It was as if the things that they were doing, which I absolutely supported in terms of street demonstrations, challenges to the authoritarian position of the United States government at the time, attempting to influence that government to shut down the war in Southeast Asia. Rarely had I spent time with such a driven group of people in the sense that they were acting not out of a proactive intention. Yeah, they had an intention to shut it down, but out of guilt. That is, they were driven to do the things they did. They didn't choose to do the things they did. Anybody who's been exposed to NLP will recognize something along the lines of the way I code it is the only justification for the application of an NLP pattern is the creation of choice or improvement of quality in the choices you're presently exercising. So here I was aligned in my intention and my actions in the street with a group of people who did not display the kind of choice that I took to be the point and shows up of course in, in NLP as you just heard me say as the touchstone for what it was that we were trying to accomplish. In that sense, excuse the language, but the meta model, the first model that was created by Pusilic and Bandler and myself, documented here to some degree in this book, uh, is a bullshit detector. If you listen to someone make a rather fluffy, high logical level statement, yes, we must shut down the activities of blah, blah, blah. And you simply take the nouns and verbs, which are not concrete enough without hallucination to be understood, that is, without an active interpretation on the part of the listener watcher. And you apply the simple specification patterns of the meta model, or any of the more recent forms, such as the verbal package and the new code, you will quickly discover if somebody knows what the hell they're talking about. It will also force them to reconnect the language that they're using with the actual experiences, which presumably are the reflection at the level of direct experience in the world of these things that they're talking about. This had a very salutary effect. And if you pursue this, as those of you who have played with the meta model or other versions of the verbal package, uh, know that the recovery of deleted elements in your internal maps 
the challenging of unspecified portions of your speech patterns, which are usually reflections of very general abstract representations in the internal maps, are ways of stimulating the person to consider from multiple perceptual positions and to come to an, a, a, a connection between what they're saying and what their direct experience is at the level of action, in this case, in the streets. So, in that sense, there was a double thing going on. I think it's well covered in this book. Uh, it's also described in several other books, uh, for example, uh, Whispering in the Wind, what the situation was and how I became initially involved. It's true. Bandler and Pusilic invited me to help them solve a puzzle. They were doing genius work. They were doing really fine replications of portions of gestalt therapy. Uh, I was not particularly enthusiastic about therapy as a concept, something I think we'll return to in a moment. But what was clear when I actually was convinced to come and watch and listen to them perform was that they were creating a context where people were developing choices they didn't have prior to entering this context. The challenge and the puzzle for Pusilic and Bandler at the time, as they described to me, was, yeah, we can do miracles. We can, uh, a treatment group is something that we can hold in the palm of our hand. We can make it work. What we have been unable to do so far is to teach people to do this, to create the context where this happens. That is to replicate our ability to perform magic. And this was uh, the thing which was the challenge they offered me for reasons which are in part described in this book uh, and too complex to bother to go into detail here. I, my immediate response was in order to help you build a system of transferring your competencies to the students you wish to instruct in this manner, I have to be a native speaker. I have to be a native actor of the vocabulary and the set of actions which constitute gestalt therapy as you presently represent it in your groups. Therefore, I will make my priority, as any linguist studying syntax of another language must, the development of a competency in action, which will lead to the creation of intuitions about how such things work, so that at the level of conscious as well as unconscious competency, I have what I need to then codify and present a transfer model, which is what they, both Kusilik and Bandler, requested me to do. Bandler mentioned uh, when he first invited me that he was intrigued. And for him, this invitation came out of having listened to a series of lectures that I gave as a professor, University of California, Santa Cruz, about the structure of language and how it's represented neurologically and the impact it has. In fact, years before, I had written a textbook called uh, A Guide to Transformational Grammar, in which exactly these questions of the relationship between language and action in the world were part of the presentation. And how did your view on therapy then change? Because you were kind of no the first time, but after that you saw them working together, doing all these miracles. Mm -hmm. How did your vision on therapy change? <laughs> I'm laughing because I pretty much have the same position on therapy that I had then. <laughs> and so to put these, these incongruities together, as I learned to act effectively in their world, this, this gestalt world, in a very short period of time it became clear to me, and I experimented outside of these official contexts, it became very clear to me that the issue was not therapy, but was change. If you ask me what's the difference between these two, I would say simply that therapy starts with a presupposition that something's wrong. And change simply says, let's make it different. Uh, one of the ways in which NLP, uh, over these decades since this historical encounter between Pusilic and Bauer and myself occurred, uh, has moved away from any assumption about problematic. In fact, in the new code, we refuse to approach the problem at all. We won't let the client discuss the problem at all. Um, in a soundbite, the problem is not the problem. The problem is the state 
in which the person who thinks they have a problem approaches the context in which they think they have that problem. So if you change the state, then there's no problem. And you don't have to know what the problem is. Let me, by the way, make a distinction which might be comforting to those of you who are using your left brain more actively than I am at the moment. Uh, and that's quite simple. If you wish to make a difference in the world, you don't have to choose making a difference in yourself or in the world at the same time. This was my objection to therapy, that much of what passed for change work in the context called therapy in the 70s was adjusting individuals to the system as opposed to preparing individuals to act independently and develop new ways of interacting themselves with one another as well as challenging certain component parts of the larger social system in which they were embedded. So this still makes sense to me. And the certainly in the new code, there is no dispute. The only the major variables that we're manipulating in the new code are state, the state of the person wishing to make a change, and the context in which they want these changes to occur. Uh, there are deep connections and even presuppositions about how to engage the unconscious. I don't know of any change that I've ever witnessed uh, or had described to me in enough detail to have an opinion that didn't involve a movement at the unconscious level. So why are we talking? Why are we operating with the left cerebral hemisphere? There is, inside of NLP, a huge division. I point you at a book which discusses, although it doesn't mention NLP directly, discusses with great precision and enormously interesting documentation this dominance of left brain activity as opposed to an integrated approach to experience called life. This is by a man named Ian McGilchrist, and the title of the book is uh, the, the, Monster. the Master and His Emissary. Um, I, I think I'm kind of well known in circles for writing difficult books. My books are simple compared to this, and it's well worth working your way through this book. This is a, uh, a man who has captured and documented a development. And it follows, by the way, a book by Julian James called uh, The Origin of Consciousness in the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind. Clearly, he could have invented the t title NLP with a title like that. 